Hello everyone. So I'm working on a new project for my Avid CNC router and I thought it'd be a good idea to do a quick little video talking about the different options of mounting a monitor and computer to your Avid CNC router or any other CNC router for that matter. When I first bought this router, there really isn't a good solution for the computer and the monitor, which is necessary to run it. Uh, some people use laptops, some people use desktops, and there's a lot of different options out there, and there just wasn't really a clean solution. And I went through a couple different iterations before I ended up on what I think is the best thing for me. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about a couple different options, kind of give you the pros and cons as I see it, and show you the option that I ended up landing on. So let's get started. So this machine, like many others, run off of a software program called Mach 3 or Mach 4, and it is a program that you install on a Windows computer. You don't really want to use that computer for anything else. You kind of want it dedicated, and you know I know this information is already known to many of you watching this, but it's just a good little refresher. Me personally, I use a little um, Dell Optiplex I got off Craigslist for like 50 bucks. They're really easy to get. They're small form factor, and they have a ton of USB connections, which is awesome. So highly recommend that, and you could even get them with a solid state drive. So they're a lot quieter and more reliable and all that good stuff. Uh, you could also run this off a laptop, things like that, but I like some of the benefits that a desktop offers, and I'll go into that a little bit later. I have mine just kind of in the bottom of the cart. Um, I could definitely mount it into the machine. It connects to the actual machine with a Ethernet cable. So the controller runs off of Ethernet, and there's only that one cable coming back to the computer. But the computer needs power. Then you're going to have a monitor that needs power. Then you're also going to need the um, cable going to the monitor. It's not a bad idea to run audio up to the monitor or maybe to some small speakers just so you can hear it ding and beep and maybe do some other stuff. So that's kind of nice. I also have a touchscreen monitor, so that's another USB cable. Then you also have the keyboard, the mouse, maybe the wireless dongles for that. You end up with um, quite a bit of cables going back and forth between the computer. So where you put the computer is pretty dependent. In my original thinking when I made this machine, I would just have the computer in the bottom of this cart, and I was like, oh yeah, I'll just have you know the ethernet cable running back to the machine. That'll be the umbilical that everything runs off of. That you know works in theory until you realize that everything needs power, and then you have to run power cables, and then I also have a um, pendant sitting um, over here. So this is a pendant that runs on the computer, and this is a USB pendant, so then that runs back to the machine. And then you might have other various little things that run back to the computer. So then you end up with this computer as a hub with all of these cables running off of it. And if you look at this setup that I currently have, this is the cabling that I have. I have a lot of relays and other additional things that go onto the machine. So you end up with a lot of cable and cable management becomes a problem. So let's look at a couple different solutions on how to deal with this. So this Harbor Freight tool cart was my first option, and I thought this was going to be a really clever and slick solution. I have this um, rolling tool cart. Um, you can get these from Harbor Freight for just a couple hundred bucks, and it has this nice lid on top, and I had my monitor mounted right here. It was kind of cool because I could close down the lid and tidy everything up, which I ended up realizing I didn't really ever need to do. And then I also have, you know, the keyboard and mouse and everything inside of here. These are all wireless, which helps out tremendously. And then of course over here you have the little um, shelf that you can get as an extra piece. So I could use the keyboard and mouse over there. And you know, it was decent. The ergonomics were okay. The biggest problem I had was I'm over here at the machine doing whatever I'm doing, and this is kind of all the way over here. And since I do use a touchscreen for Mach 3 and 4, it was kind of um, tricky to operate both of them just because of how far away this was. I really want the monitor like right here in my face so I can operate it when I'm at the machine. So this kind of, you know, is a little bit too far away. And even if I move this closer, then the whole cart of it gets in the way. The pros of this is that you have a ton of storage, so you can put all your bits in here, all your spare pieces. That is really nice. But the other issue that I had was anytime you move this cart around, all of the cables from the computer, which are down here, all of those cables get kind of tripped up underneath the caster. So you almost need some kind of cable track or something like that to hold them and elevate them above, and that is just a whole issue. So. The thing that I had with this was that the cart is mobile, but anytime you move it, you're just gonna be rolling over the cables. And there's a significant amount of cables coming off this machine. You could have the computer 
on the machine somehow and then just run the cables back and forth to the monitor. But once again, you're talking at least an HDMI cable, a USB cable, power cable, a couple things. So you're not really saving yourself that much because the bundle is just slightly smaller. So yeah, that had some significant downsides and it just kind of got frustrating. And also I have one of these um, rubber mats for chip collection and I can only get it so far. That's as far as it goes because the mat's in the way. I could remove the mat, but then I have chips everywhere. So yeah, kind of the pros and cons of using the tool cart. Next up, the monitor arm. So one night I was browsing the Avid CNC users group on Facebook. And if you have a machine or you're looking to get a machine, you haven't heard of that group, check the description down below. It's a really good group where a lot of owners like myself kind of talk about feeds and speeds and other things and modifications to the machine, things like that. Highly recommend it. But I was on that group and I saw one of the users, Nick, um, actually ended up buying one of these monitor arms from a seller on eBay. And I thought that is fantastic. That is my solution. That's what I want to get. And I got it. Uh, this monitor arm is made for, ooh, it's really kind of um, not my favorite purpose. It is made for hospitals where people are in bed in the hospital for a long extended period of time. And there's like a little kiosk um, monitor that sits on the bottom of here with like a swipe credit card thing. And it is another way to monetize people being in the hospital. It's a entertainment delivery system is what this was originally made for, which is really cool. Um, but anyway, it's a relatively large, heavy duty arm. This is not like your typical monitor um, mount that you would have for like an LCD monitor on the computer. Uh, I think this thing can extend out like, you know, five or six feet, something like that. I measured and if I mounted on the back wall, it would come out to about here on the front of the machine. So really big, heavy duty thing. This was actually tricky to get up here. It has a nice spring-loaded hinge in this section of it, so it can kind of move up and down. And then you have a pivot joint here, here, and here, and then another pivot joint right there. So it has a lot of movement to it. And the nice thing is it has this little grab handle at the bottom, so you're not grabbing the monitor. You grab this handle, just, you know, get over here, I wanna operate the CNC. And that's how it works. It also, as you can see, has a wire channel through the whole thing to where you can run all sorts of wires. So I thought this would really help out with my wire management because I could just run everything that the um, touchscreen needs, whether it be uh, the audio, the USB, the HDMI, all that good stuff and power. I could run all that through the arm, have the arm on the back wall and I'd be set. Then I kind of started realizing the cabling. Um, you'd have to run all of the cabling back to the wall because it has to go through the arm, then down underneath the table and then back to the computer. And that's fine, but it kind of was a lot of wiring and more, more wires than I really wanted to deal with. But the idea is that the machine is relatively self-contained. You don't have any of the wires up off the floor and you can just kind of put the machine, the um, computer somewhere underneath here, maybe set it down by the side and everything's kind of freed up. The thing that I didn't like about this solution for my particular setup is I don't really have side walls on the machine. If I had a side wall right here and the monitor arm kind of came out this way, that would be really nice. That is a garage door. I can't really mount to a moving garage door. So I don't think having the arm on a back wall really makes a lot of sense. I think if you have side walls, this is a really nice solution because then it kind of comes in from the side and you can kind of move it out of your way. With me, it would be coming straight back and there's really nowhere to move it other than all the way off to this side or maybe against the garage door. So it really didn't work out that well. And I was also worried about it interfering with the head unless I put it all the way over to the side and also the dust collection. The other thing to note about these arms, um, you can really only get these types of things for like, you know, medical or I've seen for like, you know, dental x-rays, things like that. They're not made for consumer purposes. So the wire management on this is an absolute nightmare. And when I got this, I was all excited and I was gonna take it apart and mount it up. And as soon as I got to the wire management, I just stopped and set it aside. I was like, no way. You have to completely tear this whole thing apart to run the wires through. And that's what a couple of people are saying in the um, group. There's just no way. If I decided, oh, I wanna add a new USB or I wanna add something new to that arm, you'd have to completely rebuild the thing. It is just, it, it's very time consuming. Now granted, you really probably only have to do it once, but it is something to consider. The other downside to this is it is just simply the monitor mount. So if you do want a keyboard or anything else like that, it is gonna be custom and people have done it, 
but you really just get the monitor. So you're relying very heavily just on touchscreen. So this really wasn't my solution either. Also mounting it's kind of a pain. So I came up with a third solution. I think this is gonna be my final, this is it. So let's go take a look at that. So here is what I hope is my final solution for the computer and monitor mounting. This is my very own machine arm um, that I designed and made. It's using 8020 extrusion, which is the exact same extrusions used in the machine. And then all of the hinges and other components are actually just 3D printed and it actually works quite well. Um, this is just the prototype version. I have a lot of little changes to make for the final one, but it has a ton of motion. We can go all the way out to the side here. This is about two feet out from the machine and it can move all the way into the machine and actually go flat with the face of it. So if you're looking to save space, you can just butt this right up against the face of the machine. And then the monitor just mounts directly to the arm and has this pivoting hinge that is also 3D printed that has a ton of range of motion. So no matter where you are in front of the machine, you can get that monitor right in front of you. This is just a prototype like what I said, but I will plan on adding a keyboard mount down here so you can put your keyboard and mouse on a little platform. And I also have some other attachments for mounting things like your vice handle. Um, I'm also going to throw on my pendant, you know, something like that to hold that. And then I can even have all the basic tooling that I normally use all on this one arm. The other benefit that this will give me is that I can route all the wires and everything through this channel and then just directly maybe into the underneath side of this machine. So all of this mess that's down at my feet can just be self-contained and the machine itself will just be nice and tidy and have nothing else coming in or out of it. Everything is just simply on this single arm. This is just the first iteration. I am doing a couple more tweaks to it. Be on the lookout for the full overview and design video on that, um, probably you know, a week or so after this video drops. And I do plan on releasing all of the files and all of the uh, models and everything for the 3D printed components so that you can make your own. So I guess to summarize the last 12 minutes or so of rambling, none of the solutions that I tried really worked out for me. So I decided to build my very own machine arm for my Avid CNC router. Um, I've used this in a couple little small projects so far and I'm really happy with, and I think this is gonna be the ultimate solution for me. I love the fact that pretty much anywhere I am at the machine, I can move the monitor right in front of my face, do the touching, do whatever, and then when I want it out of my way, I just push it out of the way and it's gone. And I don't have to worry about it. And it cleans up the wiring and makes everything just a lot nicer. So be sure to check back in a week or two for the full build video on that. And I'll be releasing all the build files and everything. And I've already been chatting a little bit with Avid. Let's hope that they make this into a kit. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, be on the lookout for that. And as always, check out my Facebook page for any updates to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.